Well, this is a Voss static electricity machine. It took me five years to make because when I made it, uh, it didn't work. It's the simplest static electricity machine you can possibly have. And uh, I didn't know why it didn't work. So I just left it on a shelf for five years. And last week I got it to work. So. It's got an air gap that you have to adjust manually because I couldn't think of any other way of adjusting it between the disc and the base. Mm -hmm. So that's not... Why do you have an air gap? Well, you just do. Where's that's... the electricity going between... Is that happening between those metal? Yeah. Oh yeah, that's cool. So, um, it's got brushes and combs, okay? It's got two brushes, those two things that connect Which across... Which two things? That, that and that connect across What's the middle. What's that and that? That thing and that. I'm not going to touch them. Why not? They connect across oh, the middle through that, that green right, wire. Okay. Got you. And then it's got combs, which is that thing and that thing. What's that thing and that thing? They're bits of bent wire, very thin bent wire. Mm. Oh, right. Okay, so the difference between brushes and combs is that combs don't actually touch the disc, but these ones do because it's not working properly. Okay. So it's still got something massively wrong with it, but it is at least making electricity. So I'll take it for bits now to show how it, show how it works. Oh, well, incidentally, if you run it faster, it doesn't work any better because the the brushes bounce because the the um. What are you using is the spinning plate, a CD. Yeah. Well, that is working a bit better, isn't it? But usually, it doesn't work any better because the brushes and combs bounce. Is that because you're, but you're holding them down now, aren't you? Um, somehow stopping it from vibrating, yeah. But it's a very difficult thing to make. Do you want to just point at what the cone, what are the cones and the brushes now that they're not moving? Yeah, okay, that's, that's a, that ought to be a comb. That comb. One there. Comb, as oh, in right. hair comb. Oh, I thought you said cone. Comb, yeah. yeah, and that's that. That's is a brush. But the combs are in fact touching the disc, so they're they're brushes. First of all, what discharge it? Yeah, I've done that. So How you do, do that by touching those those together. All oh, right. With drinking straws. Then. Cut these off and this is a piece of acetate underneath. I'll try and get that out. And do you use like styrofoam so everything's insulated? That's and, uh... right, yeah. And also it's nice and flat and rigid. So I used the double thickness of acetate, but you don't need to. And I use acetate because it's see-through. So you can see what's happening. But any plastic will do. So... Now I have to bend that back. So get that under there. That's it. So this is what's underneath. It's two bits of kitchen foil with the these things connected to it and those things connected to it. What things? The combs are stuck to the foil. And this just using the contact breaker is just using sellotape, yes. And um, 
these shapes are cut, they should be cut so that they divide the disc into four. So that should be a quarter of the disc, that sort of shape there, and that should be a quarter, but it's not. So that, you know, that needs remaking. Then underneath that, on the other side of the acetate, there's two bits of foil and they create... Two different bits of foil. Yeah, on the underneath of it and they they create two capacitors that are joined together by this bit of wire. And okay. I don't think they need to be that shape. I think just one piece of foil right across the middle would do just as well. On the bottom? On the bottom, yeah. Okay. I need to make a new disc really, because that, as you can see, that disc is all scuffed and um, the segments are the wrong shape. It should have six round segments, not however many it's got. Why? Because uh, when the voltage gets too much, you get a short circuit from the segments down onto these bits of foil. So if the segments were round, you wouldn't, that would tend less to happen. And why six and if, segments? Because if you divide the circle into four, is this right? You can have one disc there and one disc there and one disc there and one disc there. I think that's how it works. Anyway, it needs, needs remaking, but I'm not going to remake it. And then how do you get the rotating motor? That's just a motor. That's, that's, um, that's not your standard electric motor. That's a high torque electric motor as found in things like um, DVD players. And, uh, well, so this is a block of foam and it's in two plastic bags because foam can get wet on its surface and then it stops conducting. So because I've put it in these two plastic bags, you can wipe it down if it gets wet. Now this one is called Kelvin's Thunderstorm. What's it called? Kelvin's Thunderstorm and it's the simplest static electricity demonstration you can do. So you need two pie dishes and you must have an insulator. So they must be... So is that what this is? Yeah, they must be insulated from each other and also they must be insulated from the earth. Why? What would happen? Doesn't work. It took me ages to find that out. Okay. Now I've got the bottom of a plastic bottle here. Uh -huh. And two of these. These are... Two what? drinking straws with a bit of uh, wire insulation stuck in the bottom. Wire insulation? Yeah. That's one millimetre wire insulation and you make it by stripping a bit of insulation off a wire. Try again. No. No, I'm not going to work. I have to adjust it. Hang on. Try the other end. That's better. So that makes a bit of tube with a one millimeter hole in it. Oh, and that's what's at the end. That's what's at the end, yeah. Oh, right. Got you. So there are two requirements for this. One is that Oops. bit of tube that's very narrow and the other thing is you have to have quite a big head of water. So that means that between the water surface and the tube has to be quite a big height. And if you do it like this... And why has there got to be such a big height? Because then you get a nice stream of droplets when you put water in. Oh it. right, okay. If you do it like this, you can get that, that amount of head, which is about almost a foot. But you don't have to have a great big container. And because you don't have to have a great big container, you can hold it like that 
without straining your arm. Right. And that's really important because you need to be able to position this quickly and easily. Okay. So we've got two of them. And, it doesn't and how need... do you attach them? Just with blue tack or yeah, just through blue a hole? Tack. It doesn't need much water this. It only needs half a cup full of water. But you do need a big head, pressure head. Okay. Now I've got another bit of straw somewhere to put across there. So then you're joining them together? Yeah, to make a rigid frame. Like so. So now I can hold that really easily and mm -hmm. position it wherever I want. Two wires. And where are they coming from? They're coming from these foil rings. So there's one on that side. And that wire has to touch that dish. And then there's one on this side and that wire has to touch this dish. So they touch opposing dishes? Yeah. Now every single time I try this, I think it's not going to work because it's so sort of counterintuitive, but it always does work. It's, as okay. long as you follow these rules, it works like a dream. And are the wires, yeah, so the wires are bare touching the... That's it, yeah. And they're bare where they touch the foil rings. Where's that? Is that on the inside? They're sellotaped to the ring on the outside. Oh yeah, got you. Okay. Right, the next thing I'm going to need is about half a cup full of water. So I'll just go and get that. Now apparently this will work with any liquid. And I've seen on the internet somebody say that it will probably work with transformer oil, which is the most insulating liquid known to man. But I'm just going to use tap water because I don't want to make a mess. So where's this water going to drip through? It'll work with deionized water, apparently. So the water is going to go in there, and then it's going to go down these two tubes and come out there and there. What are the... Uh, oh, like dripping down that wire insulation? That's right. That you prepared yeah. earlier? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, because that's a very small hole, it'll make a stream of drops. Right, I've got you. But some, one thing that tends to happen is you get air locks in these two pipes, so you need a bit of wire handy to poke out the air locks. Okay. So off we go. So we've got an air lock in this one. And I'm just gonna poke this wire down to try and get rid of the air lock. There we are. Right, so now we've got two streams of drops, and if you if you watch watch the streams of drops very quickly, they start doing something strange. See how the streams of drops are spreading out as they go through the ring. In a minute, what will happen is how the what the streams is. The stream of drops is like spreading out as it goes through the ring. Try that one because the uh, might be there. Oh, that's really hard to capture. But even harder to capture. Is you get so it looks a bit like a sprinkler on a yes. hose. Even harder to capture is you'll get drops from this one trying to get across to this one and drops from this one trying to get across to this one. Oh, I need, I need a contrast thing. Oh uh, yeah, you can kind of see it. I'll put them a bit closer together. 
Now, when I touch it, the, it stops happening because the. Get earthed? It gets earthed, yeah. They sort of dance round when they go out the bottom of that. Yeah, it kind of looks like a waterfall of it. And if I touch them together, there's a... It oh, stop, yeah. stops happening. And then it, and start, then then it starts... It. And so what, what's causing this? I don't know. It's just magic? No, it's not magic, but um, don't ask me to explain it. I'm the wrong person. See how reluctant it gets as it gets charged up, it doesn't want to fall. Oops. Running out of water here. Yeah? I can rig up a contact breaker. Actually shows it the voltage building up. So let's put that on there. Let's pour that back in the cup, not to waste it. Give everything a quick wipe. So is it just another of those? It's a foil ring on a piece of springy wire and I'm going to blue tack it to the bottom of that pie dish so it can put it a bit more there I think. So the blue tack's going to act as an insulator? No, 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 the blue tack's holding it onto the pie dish, so... But does it not, does it let the electricity run through it, the blue tack? Yeah, the blue tack is pressing the wire against the pie dish. Oh, right, so you've got to make sure that the wire is touching the pie dish. Yeah. You can't just stick the wire into the blue tack. That's correct. Okay. So... Same on this side. Get them close together. So let's get them. side to side if possible. And is that just a ring of foil or is the wire circling the foil too? No, no, it's just a ring of foil. That looks about right. So now I'll start it going again and hopefully we should see those making and breaking as it, the voltage builds up. Ready? Here we go. So we've got an airlock this side as before. Now, 
see them pull together. What? The two rings. As the voltage builds up, they pull together. They're attracted. Oh yeah. That's cool. And so do they um, earth themselves once they've touched? They connect the two dishes. Yeah. And discharge. That's right. And then if, if you listen to the noise the drops are making, when they touch, it goes back to sort of normal. Really cool. 